How's it going, everybody? So it's Corey Lee here again today, and I want to give you my perspective on something. And I don't really just see this as my perspective. I kind of see this as, as fair. You know, I kind of see this as right. And I kind of see this as the way God would do you. Like, you know what I mean? It is really easy for a lot of people in this day and age to accidentally be a hypocrite in this department. Whenever you catch your own hypocrisy, check it, okay? If you screwed up in that area, you were a little unfair in that area, you stood for things that, you know, you stood for things for others that you don't want people standing for, for you. Like whenever you see yourself going that direction, just walk the other way, change your mind and think about it. At the end of the day, God forgives sin and he also forgives our foolishness as long as we are willing to confess and wisen up from that point forward. You know, uh, none of us are perfect and sometimes we can have worldly, wicked, weird ideas plaguing the way we do things and not even realize it. But one thing that I've watched go on in this world for a long time is a lot of people are starting to discover how they have the potential to accomplish their dreams more in these days than it was when I was younger. You know, everybody always thought that you had to do the only things that life gave you to do and that's it, you know, such as uh, work the job you can get, go to school and work the job you can get, you know. Um, and not everybody uh, believes in the fact that they can have their own dreams. And before I get to the point, I want to say something. You will run into a lot of people who would make you feel like you're a bad person because you believe in the fulfillment of your own dreams. Um, sometimes people can make you sound like you are uh, selfish, delusional, um, too ambitious and things like that. And what they don't really realize is that a lot of those dreams you would have never had had God himself had not given them to you. At a point in time, you wanted to do something else, and then all of a sudden, you come to Christ and things change. At a point in time, you would have rather had done this or that, and all of a sudden, um, you get a whiff of the word and how God thinks and feels, and a lot of things in your mind change. You know, a lot of us are called to be leaders in certain areas of life, not just leaders as far as like in the church and things like that. People always, always, always limit that to that. And that's just not um, the only way to do anything. Um, but then um, those same people who, who make you out to be awkward because you believe in the fulfillment of your own dreams will then go and praise other people who have accomplished theirs. Those same people who would make you seem selfish or awkward because you believe in the fulfillment of your own dreams would then go and spend money to see people who have accomplished theirs. Uh, they would take advice and listen to people who have accomplished theirs. But then when they come to you, it's like, nah, that's not for people like you. And truthfully, they think about it like that because a, they've never seen anybody do anything like that firsthand. Or they don't believe that it's for people like them. And so a lot of times they want to like, you know, kind of bunch you in. 
and say, well, you grew up with me. And if, and if I don't believe a person like me can do it, then I don't believe a person like you could do it. And we lived in the same neighborhood well, for 10 years or like, like, you know what I mean? Uh, we went to the same elementary school. Uh, we might even be in the same family. You know what I'm saying? Or I know what you did last summer. What make you think you would ever do anything like that? I know where you came from. I know how you grew up. You don't deserve anything like that. Like, and, 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 and the whole time, you don't even have an attitude of deserve, you know? I mean, you are fully aware of what you don't deserve, but that don't mean you don't believe, you know? But on the other hand, and this is the point I'm, I'm making, though. On the other hand, you can get another bunch of people who can tell you or just say in general or tell themselves that I don't believe in helping other people build their dreams. And let me ask you a question. If you don't believe in helping other people build their dreams, what are you gonna do when it's your turn and you need a team? and nobody wants to help you, and you don't have support, and if only you had that one person who believed in you, who'd be willing to make a donation of time or skill or labor or even money. And you gotta sit back and think, and some of them don't think, about all the people they refuse to lend a helping hand to. Don't you know that it's more blessed to be the blessing than it is to be, I mean, to receive it? It is more blessed to give than to receive. You do know that, right? Like, like you wish everybody well, but you know you could do something for them, have the time to do it have the ability, the skill, and just say, nah, that ain't my dream. Nah, that ain't my thing. And I get it. I get it. You got to have balance when it comes to this too. Because some things could be a waste of your time. Some things could be in your way. Some things could be limiting your potential and putting you in a box unnecessarily. And usually we give ourselves over to things like that because we don't believe in what we can do. And so we think all we have to do is what everybody else want us to do. And if only you had that extra three days a week to put forth in what you're doing, you could actually make something out of your life. But then you got these people in your ear who's always trying to smack you back down and make you think that you're not humble or anything like that just because you believe. And you got to fight against that all the time. You got to hear that in your ear all the time. Or you might come across a few challenges that are hard to overcome. And sometimes you just kind of put things on hold hoping that maybe one day you'll get the money to solve this issue or hoping that one day you'll be motivated to do this again. And I'm going to tell you, don't work like that because tomorrow could be worse. If things are bad today, don't put your things on hold if you don't have to because tomorrow could bring even worse problems. You might be tripping over not having a few extra dollars here and there, but tomorrow you could end up without a car too. Now you can't make the few extra dollars. But tomorrow you could end up getting divorce papers. But tomorrow, I mean, you never know. You never know. But my point of this is, if you don't believe in helping others build their dreams, then why should anybody help you? Why? 
all the things you want to accomplish in life, you know you're going to need help with that. But if you don't develop a servant's heart before you get there, you won't be able to properly handle getting there. Because he who's the greater is also the servant. The Bible says that the son of man didn't come to be served, but to serve. If you seek to be the greater, you have to realize that you are everyone's slave. Like, don't think that anybody who's their own boss doesn't have one because everybody they serve acts in that role while they're serving them. You know, when I used to detail cars, I was my, I made my own hours. But I also had to understand that some hours weren't business hours. So I, like, I couldn't just be like, yeah, I'd be there at three in the morning. I also had to understand that if I'm not going to get to it soon, they're going to find somebody else and that's money I don't make. So it's not as simple as just make your own hours. But that customer is my boss in that moment. And if I don't have a servant's heart to serve them, I won't be able to have anything going on that would make me my own boss. And some people don't see it that way. They never see it that way. I don't really detail cars anymore. I do other things now. And I'm still my own boss in a way. Still. Even if I worked for another person, I'm still my own boss. I will always see it like that. I can go apply at McDonald's right now and I'm still my own boss. Yeah, I might be on their time, but guess what? No matter what I do and where I go, I will always be my own boss. But I won't ever just be my only boss. Everybody I offer service to is my boss. And if you don't develop a servant's heart, you would not be able to overcome all the challenges that comes with doing your thing. You know, you won't be able to overcome that. The only thing that could really keep you going and pushing through all the obstacles is a cause greater than yourself. If you don't have an idea of a cause greater than yourself, you won't really find fulfillment in what you're doing. I'm, I'm not gonna say that you won't be rich I'm not going to say you won't be famous or any, anything like that. Like those things are like byproducts. Like the first and only thing you want is to be happy doing that. If you're not happy with it, who cares if it makes money? If you're not happy with it, who cares if everybody knows you? If you're not happy with it, who cares how glamorous it looks? Who cares if you even accomplished that goal? If you're not happy with it, you want to find fulfillment and fulfillment comes from a cause greater than yourself that you know you're serving. You know you're solving problems in the community. You know you're offering people solutions and watching their lives change in that area. You know that's what you do and it makes you feel good. But why should anybody help you when it's your turn? If you don't believe in helping anybody else when you know they need it, you see they need it, you have the potential to, heck, you might even need that experience. But because it isn't your dream, you don't care. Truth be told, most people's dream is somewhere along the lines of helping everyone fulfill theirs. Some people dream of a new album to listen to. You make that, you help them fulfill their dreams. Some people dream of having a podcast. You can offer that and you help them fulfill their dreams. 
and you dream of offering services like that, working with people and giving people an outlet who you know would offer solutions to the community. I look around and I see a lot of things wrong in our community. And I know I might offend a lot of people with this, but I truly believe that a lot of issues in our community is somewhere around a lot of the music that's out here right now. And I say to myself, if only the people that made more positive things had a voice, I know that I would be offering a solution to our community and I would feel really good about that. I would. And those are just, you know, like those are just some of the things that I've been working on. Man, I've got so many things, bro. Too many things to not have a team. But I don't believe in helping other people fulfill their dreams. That's dog water. That's dog water. That's straight up cat litter. For real. That's mouse turds. I mean, come on, man. Sometimes we just need a change in perspective. And sometimes that change of perspective will give us that drive we need. And that drive we need will help us see options where we thought there were roadblocks. You want to be able to see options where you thought there were roadblocks. And sometimes you won't see those options unless you go into different places. Evolve yourself into different things other than just being locked in your world, doing your thing, and that's it. That's crazy. Whenever I see people who have potential to be great, I reach out to them and I see what I could do to help them. Why? A, people have done that for me. B, I would want somebody to do that for me. And C, it just makes me feel like it, like it makes me happy. You know what I mean? And yes, a lot of them things do make money. You know what I mean? Um, they should. Uh, they can make a ton of freaking killing. But if it's about that first, then I would go and reach out to the people I, I know would offer more problems in this world who actually will spend the money. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like the people who are offering more problems in this world are the ones who would spend the money. And I'm not saying the people who offer solutions just won't. Uh, but you do know that there's a great warfare right now in the spiritual realm against wholesome things. There's so much money in Drugs, sex, violence, gangs, murder. There's so much money in that. And then you want to talk about treating the lady right. Ain't nobody paying to hear that. But there's a lot of people that will. You just got to believe. Ain't nobody listening to somebody talk about Jesus. Trust me. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. We're just not the vast majority in numbers. We're the vast majority anyway, though. We might not be the vast majority in numbers, but we are the vast majority in spirit. We are. Because he who's in me is greater than he who's in the world. For real. But you, I'm not going to sit around helping somebody else build their dreams. Well, how are you going to make the money to put into yours? How are you going to be able to see options in this world? Unless you lived in other worlds other than your own. You don't know what you can do because you don't involve yourself in other people's world. It's just yours. And that's not going to be enough. It's just not.
So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about some of the things that you can do uh, to better the community. I want you to also think about it like this too. It's got to make money, uh, but let that be last. I just want to say that first, but so that way you don't sit back and think about it. It's got to make money uh, for more than just you, but for you and the person you're offering that to. It's got to solve problems in the community. And it's got to make you who you are by you helping somebody else fulfill who they are. Spend like six months doing that. And tell me what kind of new ideas you come up with. What kind of connects you gain. You know, what kind of what networking will you end up doing? It's, it's not about being praised. If you, if you seek for men's praise, that's all the reward you're going to get. You want something greater than praise, especially from God. Don't let the right hand, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. If you do this to be praised by men, that's all the reward you're going to get. Why should God do anything for you if you just wanted everybody else to clap for you? Stop. But think about it like that. It is so easy to be hypocritical in this department because it sounds right. It sounds right. It, 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 it sounds like self-preservation. It does. But once you become a child of God, your walk of life is different. Everything is about dying to self. Everything is. I can do what's better for me. But is that going to be better in general? I can have what's better for me, but is that going to be better in general? Think about that. Thank you for watching.